Hey guys, Cloud VP here, and welcome back to the second reproduction. So, if you remember last time, we just got to the Wind Village in the second section the thing to where it's the second reality. I don't know, but I'm not exactly sure what's gonna happen here, but we're gonna see some changes, and yeah, let's get started with this. Alright. Also, I apologize for the lack of episodes this last week. With the holiday, I had a wedding I had to go to. It's been pretty busy, so I'm hoping to get back on the wagon and try and continue to get two episodes out per week, which is like all I can barely do now. I'll try to do three, but I make no promises, because, yeah, no promises. Anyway, ah, it's His Majesty. Whoa, His Majesty. Some village children who had been playing happily with the ball ran towards us the moment we came into view. Wild flowers of every color fluttered in the wind, bringing vibrancy to the village surrounding them that could have come straight out of a fairy tale. As I stood before the nostalgic scenery, I felt something tighten in my chest. I sniffled, and tears fell down my cheeks. They're all alive. Well, yes, now Chris has a chance to save them. Move the microphone closer. Eh. Eh. Okay. Of course they were alive, but that didn't stop a smile from coming onto my face. <gasps> You're talking, Lizette. I, I get so happy every time they actually talk when I play these because I'm, I'm used to not having them like not want to talk to me. It's like so sad, but Lizette's here to talk to me, so yeah. Yes, this place must never be tainted. Mm -hmm. My, my, if it isn't Lord Goddess, you have our utmost welcome, Your Highness. A middle aged half demon woman came out to welcome him, the village chief. She gave a gentle smile when she saw me and asked, Oh, my lord goddess, is this your wife? <laughs> Whoa! Hey, goddess, you got something you need to you maybe ask Christine? Uh? Because I don't remember that conversation taking place, and I'm pretty sure you guys don't remember it either. If you're watching my playthrough. Eh? He's not joking. I suddenly froze up, excitement making my heart skip a beat, but Gardas misinterpreted my reaction. His quick denial made my euphoria plummet. I like how he says Christina. Oh my, that means you're a true champion, right? Well, yeah. I guess. I still felt gloomy from Gardas's denial, so I wasn't sure what to say at first. I was trying my best to smile, but I was worried it looked too fake. Thankfully, the village chief didn't seem to mind, since she held her hand out and gave me a strong smile. Anyway, let's hurry over to my house. We've got a grand feast prepared for you all. All of you. Feast, feast! Let's feast! I bit my lip, trying to push back the wave of sorrow raising through me as I watched Gardas walk ahead. Come, come, your majesty. You too, Lady Christina. Have a seat over here. Uh, are you sure I should sit this close to you? Won't you be dis discussing something important? She wants to be so much more than your friend, Gardas. Your friend. <laughs> Ah, uh, no. Considering how our very first meeting went, I suppose it was amazing that he already wanted to call me his friend. But still, the plain gripping my chest intensified. Maybe I'm getting too impatient. I smiled bitterly at the thought and took my seat at the end of the table. Over here, mister! Yeah, Lizette, go play <laughs> with the kids. Lizette's cute. Lizette was dragged away from the table, as popular as ever with the children, and before long, the little things were crawling all over him, transforming Lizette into a mountain of children once again. Children, huh? Watching the scene made something flash through my mind, the thought of having a child with Gardas. And that was followed by the memory of Gardas refusing to make love with to me. Eh? Uh, me? Had Gardas read my mind? I responded in a nervous voice, startling and sounding nothing like my usual self. Gardas looked at me confused and tilted his head to one side. This village is good. I seconded. Yes, of course. 
I felt embarrassed. My imagination had run wild, all because of a misunderstanding. I wanted to crawl into a hole and stay there for a while, but instead, I straightened my posture and started paying better attention. You're right, the birth rate is already dropping, and we can't afford to lose any more children. It would be bad for the kingdom. Why is the birth rate dropping? いしの力に左右されやすい魔の血をついでいる。故に母が安心して埋めると思えば、解任する確率が低くなるばかりか。せっかく身ごもっても子が落ちてしまうこともある。はあ、that's no wonder you're short-handed. I see. That must be why Gardas has to fight on the front lines. Death Ride was a worse state than I thought. No wonder Gardas had to, had given up back then. There was nothing he could do to salvage his kingdom. All the other kingdoms saw Death Ride as a military superpower, but in reality, it didn't have the band power nor the vitality to hold off simultaneous attacks from the rest of the world, which means increasing the number of guards would be difficult. Suddenly telling them to put more guards around the village on a specific, specific day would be dangerous too. They'd wonder why I'd ask, and that I might be suspected as a spy. But if Lizette and I were here... So, oh, so, you'll let her give birth in the capital after all. Huh? Ah, ah, uh, yes, that's right. <laughs> Gardas looked shocked all of a sudden, and I wasn't sure why. It seemed the conversation had changed topic while I'd been pondering to myself. I gazed at him while trying to recall my words, wondering what I had said something weird, but Gardas made an odd expression and glanced away from me. Eh? <laughs> In that case, would I be allowed to visit your child? Whose? His Majesty and yours, Lady Christina. His Majesty and... Huh? What are you talking about? Oh my. How could it cute of you to get all flustered like that? You have a good eye for a woman, Your Majesty. That's <laughs> Uh, Christina, I think you should have paid attention to this bit. It seems kind of important. Okay. Th th that's not... Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah, that's right. Gardas was probably joking, unfortunately, but it does make me feel happy, even if he is being serious. The Gardas from before cared about me from the bottom of his heart. He wanted me to find happiness after he died, so he refused to make love to me. So if he suddenly decided that he did want to make love to me... There's a bright-ass light behind me. I am so sorry, guys. Move my head. Maybe that'll make it better. Because the sun is, like, setting, so I have something behind me to, like, help it. But now it's like, I'm gonna go be bright again because the clouds are, like, dumb. Anyway, so this should be... Okay, hold on, actually. Let me fix that. Okay, so that should be a little better. It shouldn't be as bright. Anyway, oh, what was I saying? Yeah, so if he s suddenly decided that he did want to make love to me, then it meant that he was asking that he was okay with me being sad after he died. But if what he said now was a joke, then that meant he was just playing around and he didn't actually mean it. Well, maybe to guard us, this was something to laugh off, but to me... To... Don't. Mm -hmm. Don't say something like that if you don't mean it. I'm not gonna shout that. Christina! Regret and sorrow poured out of me as I stormed out of the room, ignoring Gardas' cries. Huh. Huh. Hmm. She's gonna cry. I knew I was just being selfish. Get angry like that. In the past, I would have been annoyed by it, and maybe slightly put off, but that's all. It wasn't fair of me to get angry at Gardas just because he said something I couldn't remember. I'm so immature. I thought I was happy by just being by his side, but I was quickly realizing that I was getting greedier and greedier. Hime -sama? Oh, it's you, Lizette. You should probably tell him. Sorry, I just needed some fresh air. Where are you, mister? The children's voices echoed from far away. They were looking for Lizette. We shared a wry smile, then glanced downwards, at nothing in particular. Hey, Lizette. Do you think you'd be able to kill those children if you had to? Yeah. If I ordered you to, would you kill those children? Why I haven't had the chance until now. 
If you're still faithful to heterodoxism, then. Korosemasen. Tatoe Hime Sama no Gome de Demo. Ore wa Tsumi no Nai Kodomo Tachi wa Ayame de Kotoa de Kimasen. Good answer. So you're saying that demons are an evil? Hime Sama mo. Sore wa Kara Sere Tameni. Ore wa Tsurete Arukareta no Desho. I can't hide anything from you. Hime Sama no Kotona Raba Taigai wa Wakarimas. Mm, he knows. And again, it was kind of obvious. What? Sumanai, Chris. Waruhuzakina sweet. Nanika comita national sight you that the gun. Ah, no, it's nothing. I'm sorry about earlier. I'll apologize to the village chief as soon as I get back. Seeing that Gardas had come to get me lifted the light, the weight in my heart, and together we started walking back to the village chief's home. Even if I am, it's not your fault. I hated myself for being so weak. Hello, Shade. Is something troubling you? I asked, if I asked you for help, would you lend me some of your strength? I would have to hear the details first. In that case, what if I asked you to pass this letter onto the King of Roland? I see. If the Kingdom of Roland refuses to join the Alliance, then the other kingdoms may hesitate as well. Indeed, Roland is an orthodox kingdom, so I don't think they truly want to support Almenon, which is fundamentally a heterodox kingdom. So. Can you help me, or is that too much to ask? How about I propose an exchange? An exchange? Yes. I'll grant you your wish, and in exchange, you must give me the key to the door. And how does that benefit you exactly? The more keys I hold, the more doors I open. I can meet a certain someone using it. So which do you choose? Without the key, you will no longer be able to pass through the gap, you know. That's fine. I accept your proposal. I have no intention of starting all over again. I made a mistake. I was too naive. Happening once was more than enough. Hmm, I like that part of you. <laughs> you sound like you're saying I'm too young. Youth in itself is a virtue. If our lives were all as long as the demons, we would be trapped in a cage of our own increasing desires. Desires, you say? But all humans are trapped by their own desires. Every single one of us is trapped by our own desires for every second of our lives. Dun dun dun. Oh good. Fun. So tomorrow's the day off in the Demon Kingdom, huh? Whew, I should go to sleep. So I gotta figure out what I gotta do. Oh, I know. I remember. I have to go to the chapel. I have to meet Gardas at the chapel. It's one of the things I was supposed to do. But before I get to that, let's do this. Konnichiwa, Christina-sama. Today yeah, I'm thinking of going shopping today. では一緒に行きますか。私も雑貨屋に用があるので。ダメだ。クリスは忙しい。オッケー、私が専門。え、I'm when did you decide that? Are you doing this on purpose, or is it your way of inviting people out? Alright then. Gardas. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I've said this before, but I'd love to meet a woman who would actually go, Oh wow, I'm so happy at such a proposal! Oh damn it. Oh wow, I'm so happy! Thank you, your majesty! Eh, exactly. Oh right, there really is one. In the end, we were dragged along anyway, and we took our seats at a banquet populated by an ironic number of women. This time, my seat was right next to Gardas, and maybe it was just me, but I could have sworn all the women in the room were glaring at me. Like I was sitting in a cage of lions. Apparently the woman Gardas kissed last time was a courtesan he knew, and this time she wasn't allowed to sit next to him. Good, is all I have to say to that. 
I felt relieved by that, but it didn't stop her glaring at me like an enraged lioness. It made the wine I drank leave an unpleasant taste in my mouth. <sighs> this is an unpleasant situation for all of us now. I remember that to myself, but Gardas overheard me. Well, I haven't even tried it yet. To be honest, I'd rather eat somewhere quieter. <laughs> what are you imagining? I just... I'm a dog I said... Uh-oh, bad music just happened. Oh, Lord Gardas, you don't care about us anymore? A woman beside him seductively pressed her shapely bosom against him, as if trying to draw his attention away from me. She had a lot of nerve, moving to sit beside the king without permission. The woman smiled triumphantly, pleased with the angry expression on my face. Lord Gardas, why dine on unripe fruit when you can have some mature, fresh fruit right here? The woman then placed a red berry between her soft lips. <laughs> oh god, I remember her doing that last time, I think it was a berry or a cherry or something. I couldn't believe it. The woman had gone and pressed her own lips against Gardas's just like that. I never expected her to make the first move. The woman gave me a smug look over his shoulder, noticing that I'd frozen up. But I didn't care about that. I was more interested in Gardas's reaction. It didn't make... He didn't appear disgusted by it and wasn't making any moves to throw her off. I was nothing more than a friend to him, so I had no right to get angry, but I wasn't mature enough I wasn't a mature enough woman to let something like this just pass by. Every time the woman th woman's red lips touched Gardas's, my anger rose up a notch. In the end, I couldn't hold it in. Ugly jealousy snapped spread across my face as I snapped. It says if you wanted to mess with around with other women, then you shouldn't have bothered inviting me. Curious. Gardas quickly pushed the woman away, suddenly noticing the change in my attitude, but it was too late. I was already standing up in front of the whole banquet, my anger too far gone. I was making a scene all over Mate, again. Chris, I don't care where. Anywhere's better without you around. Sorry for the pause, I was expecting more Christina. opportunity. Hmm. Ha. Ha. Mate, I was running as fast as I could, but Gardas quickly caught up with me. I didn't stop running until he grabbed me by the shoulders and spun me around. Let go of me! Just go away and have fun with your courtesans! What do you think, Gardas? Jeez! Don't get too full of yourself. That kind of kiss wasn't even worth anything. お前はそれ以上の口づけをしたことがあるのか。どうせ挨拶程度の。Okay, I, I keep expecting him to go for it like that. I've gone further than that, actually. なんだと? I said I have. Yes, a kiss, mu a kiss must much more ugh, fulfilling than that. A passionate kiss that brought about happiness. レセとか. Does it even matter? It's got nothing to do with you anyway. Gardas. Confused by his silence, I raised my head to look at him. I met with unexpected serious eyes. No, they were filled with anger. I was engrossed in his mysterious dark colored eyes as he narrowed them. Narabo. Sono kokoroga Eh? Hello! That's a cute picture, though. Anyway, Gardas forced his lips against mine, giving me no time to resist. It felt more like a harsh bite than a passionate kiss, but it left me breathless. The confusion rushing through my head crushed my chest, making me feel suffocate. Making me suffocate, God. Sorry. Stop. I tried to push him away, but his hands were gripping my wrists. His warm tongue slipped between my lips and relentlessly pushed itself deeper into my mouth, and entwined itself against mine as I tried to break free. My body shook as his moist tongue rubbed against mine, and my knees trembled. I wanted to resist, but there was no strength left in my arms, and the urge slowly vanished as I drowned in the sensation. My mind quickly became blank. 
Seeing that I stopped resisting, Gardas whispered into my ears, moving to kiss me from another angle. Mm. Uh, what? He kissed me again, so hard he stole my breath away. My conscience began to fade. Hmm, that's cute. Gardas seemed to be saying something, but I was too out of it to hear him. It took me to compose. Oh, it took me a while to compose myself again after he finally released my lips. But once I returned to my senses, I shot a fiery, fiery glare at him through teary eyes, not wanting Gardas to get away with it. So no yona me wa gyaku kouka da to shitte iru ka? Hmm. Stop messing. Kuzake te nado inai. Sono shouko ni jugyo ryo mo. Sorry, guys. I'm like getting all flustered. <laughs> huh? Eh? With my feet still shaking, Gardas gallantly scooped me up and started walking, holding me close. I struggled, feeling ashamed and confused. But he held me tight in his arms, and I couldn't escape. Hello. I'll pay you back in my room. What? I don't want that kind of repayment. Whose fault do you think this is anyway? <laughs> Oh crap, I skipped it. Sorry guys, it's all blustery. Ah! Okay. You're really childish for someone your age, you know? <laughs> hmm. Huh. I let out the deepest sigh that I'd made that day as I lay in Gardas' arms. He seemed to be in good mood for some reason. What am I to you, Gardas? How do you see me right now? That's a good question. Words from earlier suddenly flashed through my mind. About being trapped in a cage of one's own increasing desires. Hello. S suddenly I'm free to make a choice! Um, okay, I'll pick something. Uh... Okay guys, so I went back because I cheated. So, I had a courtyard scene to where Christina runs into her, like, her sister, and you find out that her... You'll f I think the scene will be the same, but I found out I could buy an item to actually give to her sister, um, at the grocery shop. So I'm gonna do that first before I actually see the sister. So, because they have this item here, the amazing Viagra power, and I have enough money for it. So I was going to buy that for her. She might need it. I'm just going to buy some stuff. No, I don't want that one. I bought one of those. What is this? Glade Swine? Rumored, I'll totally buy that because that's healing properties. That also is rumored to have healing properties. What is that? All right, I'm gonna buy all that stuff. I don't, I, I don't have much more money. Okay, so I bought that stuff because I thought that would be a good idea. Let me save, and we're gonna try this again because I want to get that scene right. So uh, if I go to the rose garden, will I find money? Sick! I found 30 coal. Okay. Now I should be able to go to the courtyard, and then this scene should happen. Okay. Okay, where should I go? Yay! That's so cute! Perfect, I got it. Yeah! This should work. Wait, I recognize that voice. It's a little cheating, but I figured it out before I got too far ahead, so whatever, it's fine. Ah, I had no idea there were so many cute dresses in the Demon Kingdom. Ooh, ooh! I want that one, too! Please slow down, your highness. Come on, you can walk a bit faster, you know. If you're too slow, we might get found out. What are you doing here, Celeste? Oh dear me, Chris. I was just on my way to see you. Not really. That's not what I mean. What are you, the Queen of Roland, doing here? Well, you see, Chris, you kept going on about how wonderful Deathride was in your letters, so I thought I'd come and see it for myself. And I'm glad I did. Demons are such kind people. Our terrible opinions of them were wrong, after all. Well, this isn't anything new. Celeste was always surprising us back at home. <laughs> anyway, does the King of Roland know you're here? I gave the wrong voice. Uh, Celeste, don't tell me you left Roland without telling him. I, I left a note for him. It's fine. You don't have to worry about me. <laughs> Celeste, you could start a war like that, you know. No, I couldn't. King FedEx is a really clever man. He'll know I went because I wanted to. Did something happen? What do you mean? You always come to my room whenever you got upset, remember? I have a feeling you're doing the same thing right now. 
It's okay. You can tell me. No, don't worry. Nothing bad happened. In all honesty, I was really reluctant to marry King FedEx at first. Like, he was 50. 50 years old. But when I met him, he was actually really handsome and strong. He doesn't look 50 at all. That's great. You'll be fine then. Oh, is he violent? <laughs> no, never. He's really kind. The perfect gentleman. It's just... He's a bit too much of a gentleman. Eh? He... He won't make love to me. He won't? We've been married for almost two months now, and I've tried every book in the trick in the book to get him into bed with me. But he doesn't react at all. Ugh, am I really that unattractive? I'm King FedEx's second wife. The first one died, you see. I'm sure he's comparing me to her. Celeste, you've really fallen in love with him, haven't you? I bet you think it's weird, don't you? That I fell so deeply in love with a man 30 years older than me? No, it's not weird at all. In fact, I'm in love with a man several centuries older than me. Oh my, you mean you're... Anyway, let's not get sidetracked. My apologies for being blunt, but if the King FedEx is 50 years old, then he might have uh, physical problems preventing him from doing it. Oh. Did you remember something? Yes, I remember seeing him taking some vitamins and whatnot. Maybe that's why. Maybe he noticed your feelings and decided to do something about it. I can't believe I never noticed that. I feel so stupid now, pushing him so much without realizing. I'm a terrible wife. Oh. That's right, Celeste. Can you give this to the king? What is it? It's something you can only get in death ride. Viagra power. <laughs> I've heard from a reliable source that it's, well, quite useful at night. Oh my, really? Thank you so much, Chris. I can always count on you my time of need. Don't worry about it. I'm just glad I could help. <laughs> well, I better hurry back home and let my husband loose with it. I'll send you a letter d detailing the results. <laughs> I, I can't wait. Hmm. I'll come see you again, so wait. So until then, be well. You too, Celeste. Come on, Hannah, we're leaving. Uh, yes, my lady. I guess I didn't need to worry. Celeste is my sister, and a woman who can live by her own wits, no matter what. I wonder if Mother knew King FedEx was a perfect match for Celeste. So she... There's no way that's true. Mother's intuition would be unmatchable. My camera's getting darker. I have another chance to go somewhere? Jesus! I thought that was it. I don't even think I bought the right thing for the pub guy. Because there's a guy at the pub who needs something too. I really don't think I did. Let me see. Oh, this is going to be such a bear to edit. Oh, I don't want to edit it. Okay, no, I totally didn't have the material with me. That's okay. I solved one problem, and that is enough. So that is good for the night, I think. I was able to solve the problem. We got a good scene with, with, um, Gardas. Oh my god, I really want to look up a walkthrough, because I don't want to screw this up. But I, I feel like I haven't been making the best choices, so I might screw it up by, like, what I've been doing at night. But I guess, I guess we will see. Um, we did get some good progress. Like I said, we got that good scene with them. We, I don't actually know if they did anything. What do you guys think? Did, did they do anything? He said he was gonna make it up to her in the bedroom, but they didn't talk about anything. So, yes, no, what happened? I don't know. I really don't know what happened. I'm really curious about what did happen though. So anyway, guys, um, let me know what you think if they did do something or if they didn't, or if you think I'm doing okay, or if I need to change something. Let me know, because I want to get a good ending, like, really, really badly. Like, the other two playthroughs I did, I got okay endings, but I want to get a good ending this time, hopefully. So, anyway, guys, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that subscribe button or share with a friend. It really helps me out. And I will see you all at the next video. So, bye, everyone.